it's amazing how much he loves us. Amen. We want to welcome everybody here today. And we do want to get a special welcome to Pastor Murdice Perm. She's back in the house feeling good. Good to see you. Amen. 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 Please do not leave us alone with Pastor Ed again. Can't do it. Amen. Can't do it. Amen. But we love you. We miss you. And we see my, my, my special niece, Kishana, is back in the house. Amen. 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 The members are coming back. Amen. She's been working steadily um, if, at, on a job. Amen. But staying connected. We're so happy to see you. And when everybody get back in the house, you know we're going to throw down. You know we're going to do that, right? Amen. We, we're definitely going to do that. I believe in loving on people. I definitely believe. We want to welcome everybody today. And I do want to give a special thanks, you guys. Um, my book has, has arrived from TBN. Amen. Woo! Praise God. I am so happy, so thrilled. There was a lot of work in this one. This is, this is amazing, but I learned so much. And I want to give uh, a special thanks out to, um, to those who helped me launch it. Um, they stood with me in faith. And their names are written in this book of this book. Amen. <laughs> And so I appreciate my partners, those who sowed a significant seed. And I had already autographed it for you, showing you my, my appreciation for helping me get this started. And I want to publicly say thank you this morning and give you your first issue of this book. Amen. And, um, and you look in the back, somewhere in the back, your names are written there in the back. But most of all, your name is written in the book of life. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So we want to give this one to um, Kishana Gilliam. Everyone say thank you. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, as this book is going around the world, you, you, you help us to prevent um, all type of emotional disaster that happened in people's lives. I want to say thank you for helping us get this book around the world. God bless you. Can I get a hug? I ain't seen you so well. I mean, what's all this social distance? Man? Hey, man. <laughs> And when we're in the house, amen, no, 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 you know what I'm saying, amen, that stuff, you got, I got you, amen. Okay, let's go, I know some of the members are not here, but I'm still going to acknowledge them again, because I'm so thankful, and I don't take partnership lightly, because you help us. Remember, one lady got this book in um, California from another person from um, Atlanta, and she called her and said, um, thank you for the book, because I was about to kill myself in a couple of days. And the book prevented that misfortune from taking place in our life. See, we don't know what happens and what we can do to partnership. It's more than, okay, it's my money. I want to do that. So, you know, I don't want about this. No, it's about the assignment. It's not about the proceeds. Okay, it's about the accomplishments and what it will happen, take place in people's lives. Just want to go to um, Elder Loretta Lipskin. Can someone take this back there for her right quick? They have a, they have one of the ushers. She's coming there. Praise God. Thank you so very much. And this one is to uh, Minister Tamara Mayo. Amen. Got to change your last name to Miracle Whip. Amen. <laughs> Thank you so very much. If you look on the back, you'll see TBN on the back. You look on the back, you see TBN on the back. I just want to let you know it's back there. God, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. And this one goes to, I don't know, this is Edgar. Anybody know about it? Here you go. I give this man a hard time, but he enjoys it. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate you so very much. Thank you so very much. Thank you. I always give him a hard time. Amen. Okay. All right. The rest of them, I'm going to mail these ones off. Let me see. I got everybody that is so that's enough. See, you put that over there for me. God bless you. Thank you so very much. I really appreciate it so much. You just don't know. We're going to the next level. Amen. Amen. And a lot of orders was coming in last night. We have some um, um, in, the, uh, in the office with those who want to purchase one, too. And we were really going to be pushing it and pumping it and getting ready. And just look in the back. Somewhere in the back, your name is written back there in the column. Or you look in the contents area to see which actually what page is on. Huh? Oh, it's $13. It's $13. It's $13. Come on, y'all. Y'all ready to get into this? Work? Amen. 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 Um, this morning, I want to talk to you again in continuation of the law of capacity. This, is be, this will be part two, the law of capacity, part two. Amen. And we're going to focus our attention here on the book of Luke chapter four. Um, I'm going to tell you, I'm experiencing, I know I'm not the only one experiencing this right now, the greater things that God would do for those who make room for him. Amen. Tell your neighbor, say, make room. Make room. Man, just imagine the man who owned the inn 
when Jesus was, when Mary was about to give birth to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and he had no room for Jesus. Just imagine if he would have made room. And sometimes in our lives look like, you know, I don't have no room for it. I ain't got time to pray. I got to hurry to get to work. I got to get me some sleep in. You know, I got to fix lunch. I got to do all this. Got to get the children ready. Got to pick up. Got to drop off. Da, 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 da. And let's go on along. And God said, but you can, you can control your capacity. And you and I can make room because we don't make room. If we didn't have the ability to make room, it wouldn't be fair unto us for what God wants to give us. Because God said that you control your own capacity. No matter how full your calendar your is, is, no matter what's going on in your life, you can make room for what is necessary in your life. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Now, in the book of Luke chapter 4, let's focus our attention here um, in verse 18. He said, Jesus said this. He says that the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me. I want you to pay close attention to these words, the spirit of God, and he has anointed me, okay, to preach the gospel to the poor. And pay attention to the word gospel and pay attention to the word preach. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recover sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord where the favors of God may flow profusely. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened upon him. And he began to say unto them, this day, somebody said this day. He said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. But in other words, it's coming to pass while you're present and while you are hearing. That's what he's saying. He said, it's coming to pass while you are present and while you are hearing. Fulfilled in their ears while they are present and while they are hearing. And that's so important. Everything that you hear while you are hearing it, if you could keep on hearing it, you're giving room for it. If you get room for it, it will eventually show up. Amen. So he said these things are, are becoming realities. These things are about to manifest in our lives. Wow. We are, while you're sitting here right now, somebody's getting healed, somebody's getting saved, somebody's getting a financial breakthrough, and they're all based on hearing. Amen. So something happened miraculously based on hearing. Paul said it like this. He said, well, how is it that you that you you fall in for the grace? He said, you think you're going to get these things out of your life by working by, through your carnal effort? He said, how do you receive it? He said, you receive the miracles by hearing. Amen. And something about when you begin to hear, it begins to push out what you heard that's contrary to what you're hearing now. Right now, as I begin to preach, it's going to be a battle on hearing. What the doctor said, what your, what your credit score said, all these things said against you. Now I'm saying something else. What's going to happen is going to be pushing back that darkness. Come on, I feel like singing that song again, boy. Watch this now. And making room for it to manifest while you are present and while you are hearing. This is so important because, you know, God would not allow me to ever come up in this pulpit to minister or preach on anything that he haven't taken me through to say here it is exactly like he said it is. And today you're going to experience an enlargement on the inside because the enemy has been fighting you, trying to make you think and be small within. But that game is over with. Amen. Amen. So, so, so capacity, what builds capacity, what builds capacity is hearing truth that will take you out of the comfort zone. But it's really not your comfort zone. You just gotten used to it. You're not comfortable there. You don't just got used to it. You know, you're really not comfortable to lay in the bed with all your ink pens and more control and salsa bowl and, you know, cheeses and all that stuff. You ain't really comfortable with it, but if you lay there long enough, you, you'll get used to it. Come on, talk to me now. The prodigal son, when he was there in the pig's pen, he was not comfortable with it, but he adjusted himself to it. And there's some things in life we have just accepted and we adjusted to it and watching that. And that had become a comfort zone for some people, but you don't even want to be there yourself. So when you hear the word of truth, it's going to come back against the word of deceit and lies and all that has held you bound so that God's word can manifest in your life. Amen. Amen. But we have to continue to hear the word of God. Tell your neighbor, say, I keep hearing it. So remember, when you hear the word of God, it has an anointing on it. Yes. The spirit of God is on it. When God, the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the earth. And then when God spoke, he hovered over the word and manifested that word. So I don't care who's speaking. If it's coming from this Bible, 
They can say, well, right man, a white man wrote it, but hey, they ain't got nothing to do with who was white. How you know? <laughs> how, how do you know? Tell, prove it to me that he was white. See, stupidity will always rob you. I ain't mean to say that, but I did. But, but that's, that's, that's smallness on the inside. See, why, why, forget who wrote it. Let's, who inspired him to write it? Now, our job is to seek the one who we're talking about so we can get revelation. Because what's the one that I understand, I've learned that you can read that Bible, but if you don't get understanding and revelation, it doesn't matter who wrote it. Because there's more in here than what meets the eye. Yeah. Yeah. And if you spend time with the one who we're talking about, he will breathe on you, enlarge your place of capacity to understand and receive revelation. Yeah. Yeah. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So this anointing pushes out poverty and lack and insufficiency. It pushes out. So therefore, every time you hear this word, the spirit of God is on it and it is anointed. Amen. And it can do the job. Anything that God wanted to do, he did it with his word. When he saved you and I, he did it with his word. It's called the son of God. Amen. Amen. Everything he, God has done, everything he began, everything he finished, everything he manifested, everything he promised, he did it with his word. Nothing else is going to happen without his word. It is his word. His word is so powerful that he esteemed it above his own name because his word is no good and his name is no good. Amen. So it's vital for you and I to realize every time you read that Bible, every time you hear words come out of that Bible, every time you preach it out of your mouth, the Spirit of God is upon it and it is anointed. And what does the anointing do? It obliviates the yoke. And then it removes the burden. It doesn't break the yoke, it obliviates, it turns it to powder. Then in other words, that once it comes on you, when it obliviates, it cannot be refashioned on you again. It can't, he can't, the devil can't use the same old thing again. Now, he could try, you know, he could try the same method, but he can't use the same thing. Are you understand what I'm saying? So watch it now. Once you get free from drugs, baby, you're free from drugs. Now, he might try to bring you to alcoholism, something else that's perverted, something to that degree. But once God frees you, who the son of God has made free, he said, hey, you're free. Amen. So we got we to gotta receive and accept the liberty of Christ Jesus in every area of our life, not just in our church ethics. We got to go beyond that because we have a job we have to do. We have a God we have to glorify. Amen. Now, watch this now. So we have to create more capacity. Tell your neighbor to create more capacity. Say, matter of fact, you might want to slide over a little bit because I'm about to enlarge. We have to create more capacity than what we already have. The Bible says this. He said, they that hunger and thirst at the righteousness. He said, they shall be what? Filled. Which be satisfied. They will be filled, but they have the hunger and thirst after it. You know, there's some people you just don't want to invite over for dinner because you see they their capacity to eat your whole kitchen. <laughs> Amen. They, they don't eat. They don't. They, don't, they just bite on the refrigerator. Look like they did. Just gobble right on up, <laughs> like Garfield. Throw it in the air, sprinkle some salt, and boom. Thank you. Amen. They have that capacity. They have that capacity. And what's been happening? What we've been doing? We've been taking little appetizer bites. On stuff, and God said, Hey, listen, you know, you want more than that. He said, You know, because see, watch this now. If you keep taking these small bites on food, you know, your stomach will shrink to the capacity that what you put on the inside of it. It will shrink, it will adjust itself because you are now you tell them this is the room that you have for what I'm putting in you. But when you begin to eat more, and watch this now, you notice yourself, your stomach begins to come. The capacity begins to enlarge itself. Now, don't look down. Look up. Amen. The capacity begins to enlarge itself. Say, how did I get here? Because you kept putting something in there. Kept... Okay. So that's what God is saying. God is saying, the more that you put this word on the inside of you, he said, you will grow larger on the inside. Your faith will be larger. Your expectations will be larger. Your demonstrations will be larger. Amen. Because you had expand. You took the responsibility yourself to increase your capacity. And I learned this one thing, trying to look all serious and, 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 and religious will shrink your capacity. Because once you begin to rejoice and smile and say hallelujah and, and wave at people, I don't care. I don't care what's going on. I don't care if your hemorrhoids acting up. It doesn't matter. You got to know. I say, hey, guys, what's going on? Next thing you know, you still pass some hemorrhoids. Mm. Anyhow, watch this now. So what I'm actually saying is that you got to know how to loosen up. 
You got to know how to smile to people. Well, I just come, I got to get the word. I'm serious. But God said, you ain't going to get, you're going to miss a whole lot trying to be too serious. He said, you got to receive it cheerfully. Amen. You got to receive it joyfully. Because why are you still there looking all like you're trying to get your doctor's degree? Come on, talk to me now. The enemy is snatching revelation from you because you're too serious. You got to receive it joyfully. You got to understand what's going to be said is going to bring a breakthrough in your life. That's why when this David wrote some things, he put a selah in it. He said, he said, stop right there. He said, drop it like it's hot. Lift your hands up and give God some praise and meditate on it. Yeah. Amen. That's what he's saying. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So the, really, the reality is that your true potential stops where your hunger for change and growth ends in God's word. Some people don't want no more than what they have. I just want to go to heaven. I just want to sing in a choir. I just want to be an usher. I just want to, you know, um, dedicate myself. I just want to be a preacher. But it's more than life than being a preacher, being an usher. It's more than life than being singing. It's more than that. And God said, I've given you all this through my covenant, blood covenant with my son. He said, but you got to increase your capacity for it. I had, I had to be more than a pastor. You got to be more than a mother, a sister, a brother, an uncle, or auntie, or grandma, or whatever. You got to be more than that because God said, I want you to be more than that. Amen. And he said, you can be more than that if you receive my word on more than that. Amen. And there's some things that will not come to pass in your life until you stop fighting the things that, you're, that challenge you, that make you unhappy. You got to stop, because see, those things that you're fighting, that, you know, I'm going to tell you, the world is always going to be crazy. And sometimes your computer will come on and it take a long time to cut on. Sometimes you hit the printer and the printer won't work. Sometimes your Wi-Fi will be disconnected itself. Sometimes you talk to somebody, you'll drop the call. This is like we're in a, we live in a world that's imperfect. And in time, you're trying to get everything to flow right, and you focus on that, you're shrinking on the inside of yourself. You got to understand, no matter what happens, all things work together for my good. So you are expanding on the inside. Come on, talk to me now, while all these challenges are happening on the outside. Amen. This, you got to understand. Because see, you understand, people are going to dislike you. People are going to say things. People are going to be evil. People are going to be mean. People are going to be people. But don't focus on what they're doing. Don't focus on how they how obedient or how, how you know, excellent. Don't, don't even focus on that. Focus on, hey, God, where do I need to enlarge at? Because some of us have our attention so much on people that we can't see God in the picture. And you got to stop giving your attention to people. Amen. Okay, let's look at this now. All right. Now, so Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 15. So we must train our minds to see opportunities in every in any situation. And we're going to see that in, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 15. Amen. And this is what I'm talking about. Moses, um, Abraham, um, them sojourning. Amen. Hebrews 11 and verse 15. He said, and truly, somebody said most definitely. He said, if they had been mindful, fill their capacity and thought of that country from which they came out. They might have had opportunity, somebody say opportunity, to have returned. And watch this now, you can be in a bad relationship, and here comes a greater relationship, but you're still mindful of the bad relationship, and you missed the opportunity. Now you go back to the old thing, but you got something greater in front of you. Whatever your mind is full of, a capacity, that's the opportunity, whether it's good or bad, that comes before you. So watch this now. So that's why God say I, he's, he, he only thinks about is increasing us and blessing us. God, all is in God's mind right now is you and I. He's mindful of us. Know how you know, I know he's mindful of us? Because every day he, well, he, he had made the sun say, you keep on shining on him because I love him. He said, even those who only know me, the just and the unjust, the righteous and the evil. He said, shine. He said, because I love them. And the moon, reflect on them. And he gives us all this. He give us the rain. He give us all these things. He watch, and he give us brand new mercies each and every morning. Because he said, I know you're going to mess up. You're going to act up. You're going to act silly in your head. I'm going to give you, I love you so much. I'm going to prevent you from misfortune until you get yourself together. And you be not conformed to this world, but you be transformed by renewing of your mind. And you present your body as a living sacrifice unto him. He said, I love you so much that I'm going to give you mercy to get yourself together. Come on, listen to me now. So he's always thinking about us. He got to be mindful, full of compassion of us. Because look, he gave us a son. And not only that, he gave us angels. And then he also, he's given us his angel. 
Amen. He's given us authority over every devil, unclean spirits, and sickness and disease. And he also gives authority over the works of his hands. Amen. He's given us all these things. You mean, you, what else is he thinking about? He ain't thinking about nobody but us. He loves us that much. He loves us. I mean, oh, how he loves us. We got to look. And when you know that somebody loves you like that, it causes an increase on the inside of you right now. And the reason why a lot of us has lost appetite because we, we, it's based on relationships. Amen. It's based on relationships. Amen. And even if you messed up somewhere in life, you got to understand that God said, listen, just confess it. He said, now cleanse you. Amen. He said, I want you to stay large on the inside. God is not concerned about your sins. He took care of that. Religious people are concerned about your sin. <laughs> they want to see you fail. They want to grade your paper. But you know, everybody's paper is going to have to be graded one day, right? And know what God going to say? He said, you all passed by my son. He said, I love you. Now, I'm not giving you a license to do something to that degree. What I'm saying is that don't walk in condemnation because condemnation will shrink you on the inside. And you're going to make mistakes in life. Well, I didn't do anything, but you did think it. According to the law, it's equal. All right. But that's the law. But Jesus took care of that. Amen. All right, let's move on now. I want to do a class. Watch it now. So we must train our minds to see opportunities in every situation. And we have to increase this capacity. I don't care what the situation looks like. You've got to increase the capacity. And you'll get to a place. And the other day I was experiencing. I said, Lord, what's all this, these things happening? He said, this is my word. Well, I said that the blessing will overcome and overtake you and it will take you over. But you got to get to a place that it comes and overtake you and take you over. But watch this now. And the only way it's going to overtake you, take you over, overtake you, you got to give, you got the room for it to receive it. God said, I will open to you the windows of heaven and pull you out a blessing. There's that room enough for you to receive it. He said, I will always want to work on increasing your capacity to receive. Ask your neighbor, say, can you handle more? If you want more, you got to drop what you have in order to handle more. And these greater things will happen. Now, I'm going to tell you that every morning, every Sunday morning, if I come to church, we, this ministry ties into a kind of Copeland ministry. Then I sow into two pastors' life every Sunday. I, I sow in two pastors' life, mentors, that like every Sunday. Every Sunday I do that. Watch that. And then yesterday, God said, increase this check over here, the one that you're writing. He said, increase that one. Why he say increase that one? He said, because your capacity, watch this now, is about to increase. So you have to increase all the way. So you can't, you can't keep giving $5 or $20 and, and, and expect God will give you that big old, big old, big old. See, because what's caused you to shriek on the inside is one of your things that's called giving. Amen. One of the things that caused you to shriek on the inside is called giving. And people shrink at giving. Now, I'm just going to give my faith with my $7.50. No, they ain't going to get no more. I'm, I'm sticking on that. You can't have no budget when it comes to obeying the Holy Spirit. We got to say your name, take your name, you got to work with them. <laughs> so y'all got quiet now. <laughs> it's going to be all right. I don't want Cain and Abel come up here in a minute. Watch it now. Look at this now. Look at this now. Now, I'm, I'm going to show you something. Let, let's go to the book of Philippians right quick. Let me show you something. Take your name, say you have to give. And I'm not going to pump you up for no offering. I ain't trying to do that. Philippians. In chapter 4. And look at verse 18. Y'all read it? He said, but I have all and abound. He said, I am full, having received an effort to die. This, the things were, which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. Now, he said, Paul said, every time you give according to ministry opportunities and ministry work, he said, to God, it's a sweet smell. He said, to God, it's sacrificial and it's acceptable favor and it's well-pleasing to God. He says, but my God, which means, and my God, then my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. But look at verse um, 18. He said, but I have received all and above I am full, have received from Ephesus the things which were sent from you. Why? And this is so important. Now, let's go over here to verse 15. <clears throat> he says, now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and what? And receiving. 
Now, he didn't say receiving, then give. He says giving. Go watch this now. <laughs> ladies, can you holler at me for a minute? Hello, ladies. Now, you know if you go in that closet and you give away some of those dresses that you've been holding on since, you no, know, uh, what's it, um, Diana Ross. Okay, you've been holding it, it's still got the glitter and the sparkle and all that stuff. God said, if you would give that, there'll be room for something to be received there. Yeah. He said, the reason why something can't be received there, he said, because there's no room, because giving, what, increases compassion. It makes space for receiving. Yeah. Amen. And some of you ladies still got broken heel shoes and all that stuff and tennis shoes all turned up. You still hold on to it. God said, give it away so, so some can come to you. So all, every time you give, watch it, it causes receiving to happen to take place. Now, I, okay, ladies, it's going to be all right. Watch it. We'll get, we'll get some, I'm, we're going to get some more dresses. Come on now. Watch this now. Now, any, I, some of us might have this in an amplifier, but what Paul actually said, he says that no church communicated with me as concerning Watch this now. Debit and credit. Well, you read, he's actually saying to, they, they could have opened up a debit and credit account. He said, but you only. Go to the next verse. Verse 16. He said, for even if that's unlikely, you sent once and again unto my necessity. Now, Paul said, I'm not asking for you to, to do this for me. He says in verse 17, not because I desire a gift. He said, but I desire fruit that may abound on what? Your account. What? Your debit and credit account. And the word account translated in, in the lexical A is the word logos, means that you're asking. Because why? You cannot go to the bank and make a withdrawal. Watch this now on something that's not in there that's withdrawable. You got to make a demand on it. You got to say something. Whether it's on paper or what you're saying or you're doing online, you have to make a demand. And Paul is saying, listen, this is how you set up a debit and credit account. First thing he says, debit. Then he talk about credit. Amen. And I have learned this, that as I'm giving more and giving more, I can ask for more. Why? Because I got room to receive it. Because my giving opens up capacity to receive. It increases my faith to believe God that I can have it. And the reason why people don't give, because they believe they think they're going to get it through what they already possess at that moment. It don't work that way. It don't work that way. It works by God's supernatural plan, by giving. Amen. By giving. And as we are increasing in giving and increasing in giving, and I have friends around the world that we have to help out. Some of got stranded in the United States. Still giving, giving, giving. Giving, giving, and start what God is doing. Continue increasing, increasing, increasing. Because you, you expand your capacity. Let me ask you something. Do you want to, I'm looking straight in your eyeballs. Do you want to live on that check that you're receiving once or twice or three times or four times? Do you want that? Then you need to do something about it. You can't say, God bless me. God said, I'm showing you what to do. Because he said, I cannot increase your capacity. But he said, but I can't feel it. He said, you have to increase your capacity. God will not clean out your garage. He's not going to do that. But he will put a new car in there. Amen. He will not clean out your refrigerator, but he will put food in there. It's our responsibility to make the capacity available. It's our responsibility to keep hearing word, keep speaking word, and keep demonstrating word. God is not going to do it for us. It's our responsibility to make the right choices in life. God will tell you what to choose, but he can't make the choice. Amen. And you got to make sure you're not welcoming people in your life that's shrinking your capacity. They're still talking about yesterday, and God is talking about your future. Why will we keep talking about coronavirus? We don't need to keep talking about that no more. We need to talk about Jesus, what he wants done. Amen. We're not, going to be, we're not going to be ignorant of the fact that something exists in this earth. And the Bible talk about how men's heart will grow weak as evil come upon the earth. But he said, but keep your eyes on Jesus. He said, watch it. Be a good cheer. Yeah. Amen. He said, because I have overcome the world. Yeah. Isn't that something good? Yeah. Coronavirus is not going to overcome the world. It's not going to do it. Oh, Why? Because Jesus already overcome the world. He already taken over. He said, be a good cheer. Now, he did say, watch, the stuff that, that they tell us to do, we're supposed to be doing that all along. And we need to do more of that. Amen. Let me get back over here. My mom always told me, wash your hands. 
When I come out from outside, watch this now, the boy, don't you go in the refrigerator, I'll smack the remembrance out of thee. <laughs> wash your hands. You sit now, see, and I wash it. Now, you ain't wash it for real. Wash them. You just rinse the water and sprinkle. He said, no, that's, that's a little baby baptism. Wash your hands. And she'll wash that water, see how long you wash your hands. And you don't, you don't go in that refrigerator while washing your hands. You got people there that just come from outside. I don't know where's that coming from. Come up in the refrigerator. And we've been practicing this, this, this disease thing for so long. Maybe it's not a virus. Maybe just, we just ain't, you know, you got to be, you know, we just need to wash our hands. <laughs> And then, they, and then the whole world got to tell you, wash your hands. I, I, no, no, wash your hands. Yeah, do wash your hands. Run some good hot water on it. Amen. Look at this now. <laughs> now, Romans 12, he talk about um, renewing your mind. You got to renew your mind where finance is concerned. You got to, re- that's Romans 12. 12, 1 to 3. You got to renew your mind. You already go into 4 when you're talking about faith and et cetera, et cetera. You got to renew your mind where people are concerned. Oh, yes, amen. amen. <laughs> you know, if you could change a person, you know, they'll, they'll be perfect by now if you, if you could do that. But since you can't do it, that's why they're still the same. Why, why are you trying to fix something that you can't fix? Your time ball is show you right now and you can't fix it. Amen. And one of the things that harm a parent it's trying to fix something naturally that can only be fixed spiritually by a promise from God. Yes. And God is saying, I need you to rest in what I said instead of being also energetic in what you're trying to do. And just rest so you can grow in compassion and receive the manifestations of that prayer. Amen. You got to rest. You praying harder and fasting longer. Watch this now. You still can do that without believing. Because the Bible says when you pray... Believe that you receive when you pray. So that means that you can pray and that believe that you receive because you focus on what you see. Amen. So you go back and pray harder again. God said, but if you just receive it, it'll, you know, give room for it. He said, he said, when they come in late, don't give room for that. When they say something smart, don't give room for that. He said, when this happens, he said, don't give room for that. Only give room for what you wish to receive. Because that's the power that you and I possess. And God has said, he'll make sure that no demon, no dysfunctionality will overtake their lives. Why? He said, because I'll be working with the room that you gave me. Yes. Yes. He works with the room that, he, that we give him. Tell you, they say everything's going to be all right. So we have to keep kingdom words in our ears and keep increase on our minds. He says that, beloved, uh, what he say? He said, and be not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now watch this now. When you're on this side of the world, your mind is over here. Your mind is about this big. Your thinking capacity is like this. But once you renew your mind through God's word, your thinking capacity has no limit to it. It keeps enlarging itself. It continues to enlarge itself. Amen. God, and I'm not bragging, I'm just giving my testimony. God has enlarged me so much, I had to look in the mirror and reintroduce myself to myself. I said, who are you? What's your name, man? <laughs> What's going on? I mean, it's just like things just happen so, so grass. I thank him. He said, listen, and don't try to be apologetic to anyone about this. He said, do it. He said, Cause I got, I'm, I'm expecting glory. So if they turn their backs on you, they never say hello, or hey, that's nice, or praise God for what he's doing. He said, don't even worry about it. Don't look for that. He says, I already stamp you. You better listen to me right now. You better stop waiting for small people to hinder you from doing big things. That's just their smallness. Because they haven't taken the time to listen. They haven't taken the time to sow and to grow. They haven't taken the time to forgive. They haven't taken the time to meditate on the leaven of God's word that expand their capacity to receive. Amen. Paul has such a capacity that he spoke 14 languages and mastered seven of them. Amen. Master seven of those languages. You have to understand that people are going to be people. Just don't be like the people that the people that you don't want to be like. <clears throat> Let's look at First Kings in chapter 18. First Kings chapter 18. Let's 
you for praise. Thank you. First Kings eighteen forty one. And Elijah said to Ahab, get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound. Somebody say a sound. Yeah. Now what is the sound? Is the sound is a, a, just a, a little something? <clears throat> he said that's the sound of what? Abundance. Yeah. Yeah. And my, my Bible says, for the abundance of the heart, the mouth is going to speak. Yeah. So watch this. Abundance comes in the heart based on the abundance going in the ear. But you got to be careful what the abundance is. And the Bible says that, and Elijah said to Ahab, get thee up, eat and drink, for there... Now, he was serious about this. He said, I hear something. He said, I hear the sound of abundance. So you got to hear the word more than 30-fold. You got to hear it more than just on Sunday. You got to hear it in abundance. Amen. Now, what we say, listen to the CDs how many times? Seven, Seven times. Listen to it in abundance. Amen. Amen. As you listen to it in the Abundance, watch this now. I don't care what they are saying on the outside. You can only hear the abundance. They said, well, we don't see anything out there. He said, but I hear it. But I don't see it. But you don't worry about, watch it, because we're not going based on what you're seeing. We're going based on what we heard. Amen. We're going based on what we heard. Because really, when you look at something, you really don't get the full perception of when you see it. It is there, but you can't really see it. But once you hear more, then you can see it. So he said, that's the sound of abundance of rain. And so don't let nobody say you can't have it, you can't do it, you can't be it. You get in the word of God, you say, I can do all things through Christ Jesus with strength in me. But you got to keep getting that in you in abundance. They say, well, you're not losing no weight, but I'm, I'm losing weight. I'm working on this thing. I'm going to lay aside every weight and every sin that was so easy to beset me. And you work. No, that's not the same way. But anytime you're working on some weight, amen. And you keep working on You keep working on My body is the temple of the Lord. And I, my body, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. And that I know right well. I'm going to drink me some water. I'm going to eat me some watermelon. I'm going to take me some vitamins here. I'm going to do me some jumping jack. I'm going to do me some exercise. I'm going to do me some sit up. I'm going to take me a walk. And I'm going to slim on down back to my sexiness. Yeah. Come on, talk to me now. See, if you don't work on it, you don't speak it, you don't hear it in abundance. See, you can buy a CD all you want, you can buy a treadmill all you want, but if it's away from your ears and your eyes, you're not going to work with it. Amen. And it's important that we understand this. If I hear it in abundance, watch this now, I don't care what nobody say, I'm going to get it. Now, the last time you went to the car lot, they said you couldn't get it because of your credit score. But I'm not listening to that no more. But my God said, I can have all things richly to enjoy. That's all I'm going to hear. And then from there, he's going to show me what I need to do to watch that, to expand my capacity to receive, to get that what God has called me or said I can have in life. Amen. That house that you want, that you desire to live in, that place you want to build, those people you want to hear. Hell, you got to hear on it. 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 I truly believe that Adam, that in the Garden of Eden, that the devil didn't tell them one time to eat. That. I believe he, he rehearsed that over them. Because the Bible said, and when she saw it, what, see, it changed her perception. Because at first when she looked at it, don't touch it. Then when she kept hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing, they said, okay, well, I see it differently. See, what you hear determines how you perceive things in life. Come on. Don't tell me I'm not going to get healed because I ran over here too many times in abundance. By his stripes, I were healed. If I were, then I was, and I am right now. You follow what I'm saying? You, you, you got you to make a stance and a standard in life to the point, if God said I can have it, Lord, show me how to receive it. Help me increase my capacity, oh God. Amen. Now, so watch this now. So watch this now. He says this, uh, and, and verse 42, and Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth, and he put his face between his, what, his knees. He began to pray. This is vital. He began to pray. Watch this now, because hearing word and praying word goes together. Amen. Somebody say hearing word and praying word. You speak it to God what he already said. Why? Lord, I'm telling you what you already told me. And God said, it will not return unto me void. I just need you to tell it to me. I just need you to say it. And it's just like God telling himself that he was going to do something. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? So it's so vital for us to understand that prayer gives birth to abundance. Prayer gives birth to abundance. Then he said, go back seven times even though you didn't see it. And he said, well, they'll rise up from the east over this way, uh, 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 a cloud about the size of a man's hand. And, and, and Elijah said, get up and go. He said, grab your skirt and get the kick and run on out there and tell him, prepare himself. Watch this now. This is what I love so much. 
Now, in verse 46, and the hand of the Lord was on Elijah. And he said, he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Now watch it now. That means that God, because he heard in abundance and he prayed through abundance and he was not deceived by what he saw because he know he walked by faith and not by sight. God put his hand on him that he outran the king's charity. That boy had to have been African American. He had to have been African <laughs> Oh, the popo was chasing something. No, I just joking. <laughs> but <laughs> he outran the king's chariot. And this is what God is saying. What he told me, he said, once you continue to hear abundance, he said, it's not just abundance. He said, it's supernatural abundance. Yeah. Yeah. And it'll cause you to have bullet speed or God speed to be the first one to enter into what you heard. And for the things that you said that will come, the things you said that will happen, you'll be the one who entered in. God will put, he, you, will, you will go at such a, a fast rate. That one minute you was way back there and people still looking for you. Cause I know you're back there because ain't no way in the world you could be over here because this you was over there yesterday. Next thing you know, ooh, you way over there somewhere. Why? Because God will move you at great speed. He'll move you at great speed. But you have to continue to hear word in abundance. I, I call, can call sometimes that I didn't listen to the word for like maybe two days. I was getting sick on the inside. I said, what is wrong with me? God said, you already, your spirit is already used to hearing so much word a day. And I was like, I just feel, well, I just feel rotten. He said, he said, he said that's, you, 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 you're getting depressed. Your spirit man needs word. He said, that's why your attitude is acting up because the baby needs some milk, some serious, serious milk. That's why you're fussing and hollering and everything, because you're not getting the, the, the nutrition that you need on the portions or the level that your, your system is used to it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's, it, this is vital, man. I mean, if you could get you a bed that got some round sound in it, and you could just pluck a, a plug a, 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 a SUB, UBS thing. You just one of them little things you got word on. You know what I'm saying? And put it, let that thing just talk to you all night long and listen to it. I guarantee you, each and every morning, you wake up a new individual. As you listen to the word and then watch it, because when you are asleep, you are not asleep. Yeah. Just your body sleep. Yeah. But you are not asleep. Your mind is still hearing. Your spirit is still watching the functioning. Your, your organs are still functioning and it still can absorb word. Yeah. Yeah. And you notice a behavior change. Yeah. You notice a behavior change. And what the church is, is, is faltering at is a lack of word. Yeah. 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 Watch it now. Now it's my time to preach. Don't nobody bother me. I got to go here. I'm going to fast. <laughs> All I want is crackers and water. I'm going to take communion every three, four minutes. I got to get, get the word. But watch this. Is it only important when it's time for you to preach? Because the Bible says you're going to live by the word of God, not just preach it. My time to preach. I can't talk to nobody. Channel call my guy. I got to preach Sunday morning. No, you can't say you understand. It's a necessity for you each and every day. You got to have it. And all these things are going on in life right now. Man, I got the, I, I'm not going to make it about the word. It ain't going to happen. I know that. I, I seriously, sincerely know that. And it's the word of God that is prospering me. Amen. Prospering us. Amen. So, so, so here it enlarges our room to receive. We must hear the sound of abundance. We must keep hearing the word of God. Hearing causes us to see what has not yet been seen. Prayer increases us, spirit, increases us in spiritual progress and supernatural ability. Amen. And increases that. And increases that. And increases that. But don't allow relationships to block. Watch now. Your capacity for growth. Don't allow a relationship to block that. Now, what's this is where we're going to go. We'll go here to the book of, um, let's go get the book of Ephesians. We're going to go there because that kind of flows with this. Ephesians chapter 3. Whew, yes, amen. <laughs> watch this, watch this, man. Let's, listen to me very carefully. You know, anytime you, 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 you allow a relationship with somebody, your family or, or you know, co-worker or somebody in church, whatever the case may be, and you stop and you focus on that and you get that little ill feeling, that's where you stop growing. That's where you stop increasing on the inside because that's blocking your capacity. You got to get past that. You got to get past that. 
God has shown me over the years. He said, son, you know, I can prosper you with 6,000 people or with six. You see me do it. He said, get over people. He said, because there's something else I want to give you. And if you don't get over people, it's going to block the capacity for, me, for you to receive it. Everybody, everybody, I learned that. I'm not everybody his pastor. I learned that. Ain't no problem. But, you know, they'll learn, find out that God has anointed somebody here for you, but I'm not everybody's pastor. Ain't no problem with that. I'm not going to try to make myself be somebody's pastor who don't want me to be their pastor. I'm not going to do that. But those who allow me to pastor them, they have a commitment with an anointing on it. They got a commitment from me, and anointing comes from God. Amen. Amen. And it will bring supernatural increase in their life. Now, look at this now, Ephesians chapter 3, and let's look at verse... Um, 16, he said that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. He said that Christ may dwell in your hearts by what? Faith. That ye be rooted and what? Grounded by what? By love. Rooted and grounded by love and may be able to comprehend with all saints, no matter who they are, because all saints are, some of them ain't, right? What is the breadth, the broad, the length, the depth, and the height? The capacity and to know the love of Christ. Why is he said, you really won't know the love of Christ until you can deal with folks. Amen. 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 And watch this. But what's going to cause you to know the love of Christ is by allowing him first to dwell on the inside of you. And as he dwell on the inside of you, he's going to help you to overcome people. He's going to help you overcome people. So you go up to that person's face, you just smile like Goma Powell. They just frown. And God said, we're going to overcome that intimidation? He said, are you going to take that home? Are that going to take up space? Is that going to block capacity? Well, I know, but Lord, I called and they ain't called me back. He said, but don't let that block capacity. He said, we got to get old people. He said, know that I love you. Now watch this now. He says that, ooh, this is so good. Watch this now. So I, mm. he says, uh, and to know, verse 19, the love of Christ was past his knowledge. Not just only knowledge who Jesus is, but also on a level that you have known people. Because Paul said, he said, know no man by the flesh, but by the what? Spirit. Amen. That's why Jesus was able to say, Lord, forgive them. For they know not what they do. He surpassed what they was doing to him at that time through love. And sometimes you think people just, they just hate you. They just mean to you. And God said, no, they're lacking something. He said, in order for you to see exactly what they're lacking, you got to know that I love you. And so therefore, I give you a bird's eye view on them. And it passes the knowledge that you had before in that relationship. Amen. Y'all get that? Amen. So you think this person's against you pur purposely, but they could be against themselves, not knowing it. Or what's robbing them from doing so could be a lack of word. Because you can't have a, a lot of word in your, in your heart and, and, and speak in it and be rude to people. Yeah. Or have an ugly face. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you ain't good looking, you need all the help you can get. Hey, Amen. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, but when I ask, I'm, I'm going to tell you, listen, to, I haven't been this good looking all my life. I, just, I know I look better each time I see you, don't <laughs> Watch this. Some people don't like that, but guess what? I don't need that amen for it to be true. Yeah, you follow what I'm saying? You don't wake up and say, oh, but you're just so ugly, I can't stand looking at you. You don't close the mirror. No, you say, God, I thank you. You made me beautiful and wonderful and handsome. God, I thank you, God. I'm well favored. You don't go and look. Don't never call yourself ugly. Don't never call yourself ugly. Don't never do that. I don't care if somebody else call you ugly. Don't you call yourself ugly. If you call yourself ugly, you had just watched it. You just profane God's creation. And God said you are fearfully and you are wonderfully made. Well, look at your hair. But hey, I can fix this in a minute. Give me a box. Or give me something and put some of this stuff together. We can fix that. Forget the box. Give me one of them things and put them, them little things you put in your head. Hey, man. We can fix that. Or give you a comb or some shampoo or some conditioner. We can fix that. Everything on you, watch, the beauty and the wonderfulness is there. Yeah. Just have to tweak it a little bit. Yeah. Got to work on some things. Sometimes I look in the mirror, come on, guys, you know, when you trim that mustache right, call, you say, man, I look like Denzel Washington's little brother or somebody. You look looking good once you trim it, you line it up real good. 
But you can't look at what is there at the moment and then and, and count yourself out the game. Amen. All we need is a little grease or something. Come on, y'all. Am I? T- All right, come on now. Mm-hmm. Look at this now. He says now. Then he says after he said uh, which passes knowledge that we might be filled with all the fullness of God. You see that? Somebody said fullness. fullness. He said that we might be filled with all the fullness of God. Then he says now to him. <laughs> That's all. Okay. Why, why, why is it now to him? Because now God is occupying capacity. Mm-mm-mm. Now to him that is able to do what? Exceedingly. Far past what you can ever ask, imagine, or think according to the power. What's the power? The power is the fullness of the capacity. Right. Look, if, if, if you put the wrong gas in the tank, watch this now. If it's full with the wrong thing, it don't have the power to perform the way it's supposed to perform. Come on now. Y'all remember the gas station called Sitco? Y'all remember Sitco? C-I-T-G-O? Something like that. Sitco. And it had the lowest price and the cheapest gas. You can fill it up and go 10 miles and you next time you got a half a tank of gas. (laughs) And your car started performing incorrectly. Why? Because you didn't fill it with the fullness of what it required. And God said, on the inside of you, he said, I don't want no doubt. I don't want no unbelief. I don't want no murmur. I don't want no complaining. I want nobody telling you that you can't do it. I don't want you lying against the truth. I don't want you saying that you are broke. I don't want you saying that you are sick. He said, fill up the fullness of my promise of my word. He said, then watch how able I am. He said, watch how able. He said, now it's unto me. He said, but I got to fill you up with compassion of my fullness. I'm your God. I'm your father. I can take care of you. He said, I'll do far past us. So, oh, so exceeding what you're going to ever imagine or think according to the capacity of the fullness on the inside of you. And you take that car down, you get it clean, then you take it to Exxon or something like that, you fill up with some good quality gas, and next thing you know, it's performing differently according to the power that occupies the space. Amen. According to that, don't let friends in bad relationship occupy your space. Don't let mistreatment occupy Occupy the space. You got to get it. You got to open up the door and, and get the broom and the righteous broom, the broom of, of deliverance and sweep it on out. There. <laughs> Don't use the dustpan. Just sweep it on out there, man. Get it on out the house. Get it out of the side of you. Get it out of you. You don't need that no more. You need to forgive people because they occupy space in your life. And God said, I'm trying to put some, but you got some in that place. I need to get rid of it. You, you mad at somebody that, that they didn't vote. Come on now. You, you mad at somebody who don't really contribute to society. And God said, how long you allow that to keep you under water? He said, because as you do that, watch it, the next relationship you go into, you're going to spill out of that. It's going to spill out of you. He said, and I, I'm trying to fill you in that capacity because I want to give somebody to you that will love you. You accept the love that I give you through that person. Amen. I don't want to hold your hand. I don't know what you're up to. What you're up to. Don't want to hold your hand. Well, God said, I want to come on now. He said, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> Tell you, they said, relax. <laughs> like my little niece, I try to, she stay over the house. I try to give her a kiss. She said, mm, 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 mm. She was like, no, 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 don't kiss me. <laughs> but uh, look, you can't let people love you. Hey, Amen. That'll take you into temptation, but let people love you. So if I want to do something good for you, make room for it. Oh, no, you want something. No, God, I'm trying to get you to receive something. Get, get rid of that, that preconceived um, conception, perception that everybody's trying to take advantage of you. Come on, talk to me now. But you always think somebody's stealing from you, somebody's going to do you wrong, or, you know, what you're up to, or are you going to make more money than I am. It's, your think is all on the wrong terms. God said, listen, give me room. Get rid of that. I want to increase you. Increase you so much that people see that I'm your God. Amen? Amen. So let the people go. Let them go. Let the people go. Love on them. Let them go. If your neighbor don't speak to them, love on them. Toot the horn in the house. Love on them. Amen. Don't hold nothing in that place in life but what God word has in store for you. Amen? Amen. Tell your neighbor, say, this is the law of capacity. Come on, let's give God some praise in here. Amen? Amen.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you for tuning in to the Increase in National Ministries broadcast today. We pray that the Word of God has richly blessed and transformed your life. To know more about us, you may visit our website at increaseinternationalministries.com or connect with us on Facebook at Increase, capital I-N-T, apostrophe L, Ministries. Or contact us by phone at 804-658-4896. Remember, wherever you go, may increase in favor flow.